Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out The Chain by Fleetwood Mac, featuring, of course, the incredible guitar work of Lindsey Buckingham. Man, that guy can play. Now, there's quite a few interesting things going on in this tune. There's a lot of layers on the original recording, a lot of different guitar parts going on. Uh, I'd encourage you to go and have a listen to the track and listen to just the left speaker and just the right speaker. You can start to hear clearly the, the distinction between this kind of electric guitar part and what may be a resonator guitar or an acoustic guitar in the other part and the way they kind of weave together so beautifully. Now to try and learn that and to try and teach that as separate layers will be very difficult for me and for you. Uh, so what I've done is transcribed a whole bunch of it and tried to make a, a, a framework for you, one that sounds pretty close to the original. It will be exact parts played at, at various parts of the song. Uh, but it gives you a chance of actually learning it. And if you really want to go into the minutiae, you're going to have to do a bit of transcribing yourself because he does change the patterns up at various points in the song. It's not exactly the same every time. I think that's too difficult to learn. It's too difficult for me to learn it that way. It would be a really pretty monumental task to be able to get all of that stuff down. And I'm not sure of the value in it. I feel like you're better off learning a, a, a general version, which is going to be accurate, sound pretty damn close to the record. And then if you really want to go in and start to learn up some of those other little parts, then uh, that can be uh, in your own time, just using your ears, listening to the original recording, which is a good thing to be doing anyway. Uh, this arrangement, this version, is in double drop D tuning, so you need to tune the two outside strings of your guitar down by one tone. And to put it in the key of the original Rumours version, I've put the capo on at the second fret. It does seem like most of the modern versions that you see of the, the guys playing it, uh, guys and girls playing it, uh, would be in the same tuning but just without the capo, so down a tone. It does make it a lot easier to sing, especially if you're a guy singer or you're going to attempt to sing this song. It's it's hard to play it and sing it at the same time, uh, but you probably want to do it with the, the capo off. would make it a little bit easier to manage. Now, the way I want to take you through the tune is bar by bar for the fretting hand and then the picking hand. Now, most of the time, the hard work is going to be in the finger picking, okay? The actual chords themselves are not particularly difficult. There's a few that are maybe a tad awkward, but it's not the hard part. The hard part is going to be getting this Travis picking where the thumb is moving between the thicker string and usually the fourth string. So getting that kind of consistent and being able to practice the pattern up on its own. What I would really recommend that you do is you learn it one bar at a time and work on that one bar before going on to the next one. Okay, that's the easiest way with this kind of pattern to, to figure it out. Uh, if you've got your Justin Guitar tab subscription over on the website, you can, of course, check out the tabs on the screen. It'll be a lot easier to kind of follow it along with your eyes as we go along, although I will put some on top of this video as well. So go grab your guitar, get yourself into double drop D tuning, get the capo on the second fret, let's get started. The first bar uses this chord, which is looks like a D7, I guess. It's actually functioning as a D9 in this tuning. Uh, nothing on the thinnest three strings, then a second fret with the second finger, first fret with the first finger, and second fret with the third finger. But the fun, of course, is in the finger picking, so let's have a look at that. The fingers get assigned strings in this style. Thumb is going to be playing the thickest three strings. Any notes on the third string are going to be played by the first finger, on the second string with the second finger, and on the thinner string with the third finger. So when I'm talking about playing string two, it's going to be finger two. If I'm talking about playing string three, it's going to be finger one. Okay, so just remember that that's the finger layout. Thumb is going to be moving around mostly on the thicker string and the fourth string for the first part, but onto the fifth string at some points as well. So the first thing you want to get down is this pattern of going thicker string, third string, fourth string, second string. So thumb, first finger, thumb, second finger. You probably want to give that a little bit of practice before trying to do anything else. Getting used to the consistent nature of the thumb. I really would give that like a decent amount of work before you move on to anything else. Get that thumb used to moving between the thicker string and the fourth string. Now the actual pattern for that first bar would be thumb, first, thumb, second, thumb, first, and then the third finger. Okay, so there's a bit of silence there where the thumb stops. That's unusual. It just happens in the intro. Six, three, four, two, six, 
six, three, one. It's the string count. The second bar, almost identical, we've still got our D7 shape down, but we're now going to hammer on the little finger down in the third fret of the second string. Okay, so exactly the same. That's the bar. I'm going to talk about the finger picking again separately. Just going to be getting developing some independence there for the little finger to hammer on on the third fret of the second string. This second bar starts exactly the same sixth string, third string, fourth string, second string. But now we've got the same pattern again, except now when we play the fourth string, we play the second string at the same time and then hammer little finger. Now there's a little, you hear these other two notes, a little bit of a bass note, but it's very, very hidden. And there's a little strum there that falls on the end after two. I wouldn't worry about those two ghost notes and that little strum when I first learned it, if I was you, I'm just mentioning it for those of you that want to nerd out on this stuff, so. One, E, and O. Uh. Okay, string six, three, four, two, six, three. That's four and two together with the hammer on. Back to the bass note, little ghost. Strum if you want on the and after four. practice it just the same thing over and again repetition is the key here really just taking it slowly making sure you get it a hundred percent correct and only when you've got it absolutely spot on should you start speeding it up if I'm well if I'm when I learned this tune I literally practicing it going exactly how many times maybe 10 times making sure that my fingers knew what exactly what they were supposed to do before I took it any faster or any further because once your mind knows what it should do it's relatively easy to just speed it up the fourth bar you're probably going to repeat that a few times as well again it's essentially the same thing with this little hammer on with the third uh, with the little finger the third fret Although I'm also using it as a mute. So really slowly. You can see that little finger's just touching down to mute that note. To get, it just changes the dynamic a bit. Otherwise it's... And I want... I want that muted before the hammer-on. Adding in that little mute there with a the little finger is pretty tricky. I hadn't even thought about it until I started doing this video. I'm watching my hand going, oh, my little finger's doing something a bit weird there. You might find that really difficult to do, in which case just leave it out. It's not a big part of the deal, but it does change the, the kind of the phrasing. The doo -doo -da -ba -da -ba -da. If you leave it off, doo -doo -da 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 -da. it doesn't quite have the same momentum. So have a go at it, but if you find it like, oh my God, this is too difficult, just skip that little bit. So this fourth bar is where we first get that thumb really moving. Key thing here is that thumb, getting that consistent. 
practised so far, the rest shouldn't be too difficult. Six, three, four, two, six, three, two, uh, two and four together. And then here we've got that the second string again with the bass, with the hammer on, and then the thumb keeps going. You'll hear on the original recording there at the intro, there are just tons and tons of variations. So take it as much detail as you want. I, I do feel like there's a, a limited benefit to really go into the minutiae of what's being played. Much more important is having solid time, getting that thumb to be consistent, kind of feeling something with the music. I feel like those things are more important than, you know, whether there's an extra note done here or, you know, those kind of really little things. Just don't think that they're that important. Um, the next little section that I did in the intro is not used on the original recording, this little bit with a stop, a rundown from the D, but it's quite commonly used live. So I thought I'd put it in there. For me, it kind of makes sense of the arrangement to do the intro where uh, it finishes with the full Travis picking, moving thumb thing, the little breakdown, which I'm just about to show you, and then going into the verse sequence. That makes sense to me as an arrangement, but really feel free to arrange it however you like. If you're doing the cover, it's your gig to uh, figure out an arrangement that you enjoy, that you feel works for you. This is the stop I'm talking about, so it's a little D chord. We don't need the second finger involved. Just the thinnest uh, fourth. That doesn't really matter if you strum the thinnest string as well. It's the same note. We're doing this little line, which is starting on the fourth string, third fret with the second finger, second fret with the first finger, open fourth string, third fret on the fifth string, third fret on the thickest string to the open. Uh, thicker string. Four, so I'm playing that phrase, I'm just using a down strum with my first finger, and then whole hand just covering all the strings. Now, I've seen video of Lindsay do it with all of his other fingers, so it's kind of resting on and going like that. Doesn't work for me doing that. For me, it's a lot easier. But you might find like him, I think maybe he's, I can't remember now. I remember it was all of the other fingers kind of flicking out like that. But for me, that method just doesn't work, and that's okay. We have to find our way to play these tunes. So uh, it's definitely worth checking out great guitar players like Lindsay and seeing how they're playing stuff and learning from it. But as well, you've got to just try it, like, try their way and see if it works. James Taylor is one of my favorites like that. He's one of my all-time favorite guitar players, but he plays chords in ways that just, just doesn't work for my fingers at all. So I don't play like that, even though I love his guitar work so much. Same with the Lindsey Buckingham thing. So if there are things that he's doing a particular way that work for you, great. Learn from it. Try it. If it doesn't work for you, then go back to figuring out your own way. So the stuff we've covered so far, I would class as the intro. My usual approach to that would be playing the first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar, and staying around on that fourth bar for a bit before going into the chord with the stop. And then we know we're into the verse. But like I said, feel free to make your own arrangement. Most of that stuff only happens there at the beginning. You can use it in the bridge as well, actually, a, a little later. But uh, the stuff coming up now, the verses, this is the really big deal stuff where you've got to try and automate it enough to sing it if you're going to. Uh, it's all the Travis picking stuff. It's really cool. Uh, let's just crack in. So the first bar of the verse is this. So we're playing like a D5. We're not playing the thinnest string here. It doesn't really matter if you played it by accident, but... We don't need it. The only thing that we're doing is this little flick off with the second finger, third fret on the fifth string, 
and it's going to flick off the A. The rest of it is all in the finger picking. Okay, so we start exactly the same. Six, three, four, two. But now we're playing the fifth string with the thumb and the third string at the same time, which is where the flick off is. And then we're playing the fourth string and the second string at the same time. So this would be thumb and first finger, flick off, thumb and second finger. Then thumb goes back to its old job. So slowly. practice it to start off with. Repetition's the key. I should point out, often when I'm doing this particular style, I, I want to have a bit of some of my palm sitting down on the bridge back there. I guess sometimes I want a, a little bit of mute. So we get a little bit mute. Not in this song, but often Travis Picking has that kind of uh, muted bass note thing. In this one, I'm trying to keep it clear. There's the strings a bit more resonant. Sometimes you might find it interesting or beneficial technically to have an anchor. Now I don't have an anchor down at all. So that's kind of up to you. Just remember, pattern. Slow first of all, make sure you get it right. Then speed it up. Okay, the second chord is probably the hardest chord in the whole song. It's not that difficult, but it does feel a little awkward under the fingers. It's basically a G chord, G add nine, I guess. Start with the first finger barring three frets above the capo, thinnest two strings. Third finger reaches over two frets higher, that's five frets above the capo on the thicker string. And then little finger also needs to go down in that same fret, five frets above the capo on the thinner string. And that little finger's gonna lift off, that's the change. Very subtle one again. A little mistake there for me, doesn't matter, we're good. Okay, that's the pattern. So it's just that chord, little finger comes off there. Just at the end of the riff before we get to the bass by itself. Okay, this pattern is one of the harder ones in the tune, so take it slowly, learn it a chunk at a time. It starts off with thicker string, third string, fourth string, thinner string. Okay, get that right first of all. Probably doesn't feel too difficult. Then thicker string, second string, and then fourth string and thinner string together. Thumb, first finger, thumb, third finger, thumb, second finger, thumb and third finger together. Uh, I just played the wrong one. Told you. It's a difficult one to think of. This is definitely a pattern if I do it slowly, it's really tricky. I have had a period, obviously, where I practiced it slowly, but still trying to do it slowly and carefully and explain it to you at the same time. This is some tough. There we go. 
definitely, if I was going to try and sing and play this, that particular pattern would need a bunch more work. If things go a little bit sketchy in this song, it's usually that pattern. The key is to remember that you've got to keep the bass consistent. And if the pattern goes wrong, you just ignore it and keep the bass going. If you keep the bass going, you can get away with almost anything. So that's the key thing is trying to think of that bass as being a super consistent. That's the bass groove. It's the drums. that's keeping it pushing. If you get the finger, if you pick a wrong string, it doesn't really matter. All right, I quite often, instead of playing the second string, I accidentally play the third string instead. But, you know, it still sounds fine. There's no notes as long as you've held the chord down. As I said, all of the notes are going to kind of work okay. So don't worry too much about it. The next two chords are exactly the same shape. I'm going to talk about the direct frets now, not relative to the capo, okay? This second finger on the 12th fret on the thicker string, first finger on the 11th fret of the third string, and third finger down on the... Uh, 12th fret of the second string. Okay. And then we move exactly the same thing down. Two frets. Bit of relief after all of this complicated stuff. It actually feels pretty nice. It's not even difficult to move it. Okay, so try and get that down. We'll take you through the fingering for both of these bars in a sec. Just make sure you get those chords down first. The fifth string is muted. Actually, it doesn't really matter. If you accidentally hit the thinner string, it's not a note officially in the chord, but it doesn't sound bad at all. If you accidentally played it, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be good. Sixth string, third string, fourth string, second string, then thicker string, third string, fourth string. Okay, that's part one. Now we're pl now playing on the second chord, the B flat chord. We're playing the thicker string and the second string. So they're together, third string, fourth string, then the second again. Thicker string, third string, fourth string. Very common finger picking pattern this anyway. After that, it goes back to another bar the same as the first one. So let me just give you a close-up, a slowed down close-up of each hand of that whole verse section, which is most commonly repeated. Close up of the pick and hand, same thing.
Now there are many different slight variations to that all of the way through the tune. So like I said, this is a general one. If you split the stereo and listen, I think it's only to the left hand speaker, you hear that uh, acoustic resonator kind of guitar part which this is based on. Uh, if you want to change up some of the finger picking patterns like him, that totally works or make up your own, really doesn't matter. Like I said, this is a foundation, something to get you going on that you can use all of the way through the song. I think it would work perfectly fine if you did a cover using exactly this stuff, but feel free to change it up as you like. Now, after this bit, we get to the chorus. Now, the chorus is kind of open chords. Again, there are a lot of different approaches to doing it. I'm not hearing it as much as, as clearly on the original recording, uh, but there are lots of different live versions. So I'm giving you a kind of one of the versions that I've seen the, the way he plays it live because I think it works really well. I should point out the rhythm though that he plays it with. Um, again, he tends to use these the, the second, third and fourth fingers kind of flicking down. I find it a lot easier to just use my first finger. So I'm going to do that. If you want to check out some of those live videos, of course, I will link to the videos of him playing it live over on the website. There'll be a link in the description if this video, if you happen to be over on, uh, on YouTube. So check it out on the website. Uh, if you want to examine his technique and have a bit of a go at that, you know, of course, I would recommend that you have a try at that, see if it works for you. Um, even the rhythm pattern that he does, he's doing this like one and a two and a three and a four and a all. I'm just using my first fingers. Down, 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 down. He's using that pattern pretty consistently. It feels really weird for me to sing over that pattern. It sounds great. And being that he plays that particular pattern so consistently, I'd be fairly sure that's what's on the record there somewhere. If I was playing it myself, my own version, I probably wouldn't do that strumming, but that's the one I'm gonna use for this lesson because it's kind of what the artist intended. So the first chord we need is this G5 chord. Now, note that the harmony on the original recording is a G minor. So if you're choosing to use different chord groups, make sure you're playing G minor and not G major. It'll sound a bit sour. Uh, this G5 chord though, uh, third finger, five frets above the cap on the thicker string, muted fifth string, open middle two strings, first finger down, uh, third fret on the second string, thinner string you can either leave open or mute it with the underneath of your first finger. It doesn't really matter. So that's the... G5, replacement for G minor. I tend to call it G minor even though it isn't, to be honest. Uh, then we've got a D minor. Again, we're playing a D5. Should be familiar with this one already. Thinner string is definitely muted here. Okay, there's a D minor. Then we've got a B flat chord. First finger just moves over to the first fret of the fifth string, muting the thicker string, preferably. So we've got nothing, first fret, open, open, third fret and muting the thinner string that's a B flat B flat six I guess and then it's going to a C add nine which is uh, not playing the, th the thicker string that should be muted by the tip of your second finger third fret second fret open third fret that third finger still staying there you can play the thinner string or not as you like. So we've got two bars of the G minor first of all, then half a bar each of the D minor and the uh, B flat and then a bar of the C. So it's this sequence, three, four, so G. Second bar. D minor, D flat, C. G minor. Can't, I, over that rhythm with that strumming pattern, I just can't sing it at all. I find it really frustrating. I'm going to work on that and try and get that down. Uh, so it does that twice around, and then you, I'd recommend that you're going back to that section, or you could go back to the intro. Wouldn't really matter, one of those, whichever one you're feeling uh, most in tune with, and then you're probably going to have the again as a little stop going back into another verse into another chorus, but this time, at the end of the chorus, you're going to go into the bridge. Now this one, starting like a little uh, D, it looks like a D sus2 with the second finger off. We're going to have down, up, down. 
now this time first finger is moving down to the second fret of the thinner string second finger is moving to the third fret on the third string this is a D with a sharp 5 D sus 2 sharp 5 I suppose and I'm just picking now it's like I'm, I'm pretending to hold a pick with just my first and second fingers and I'm just plucking a thinner string, second string, third string. One E and the two and three E and the four E and E and the two E and And then you hold it and you wait for the bass riff. Now the bass riff is an all-time classic. Uh, is this? how you'd play it on that one string so uh, this is five frets above the capo two frets higher one fret higher back down this would be three frets above the capo five frets above the capo and seven to the open string okay with the capo one one two three four and one What a classic. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's five frets above the capo. Stepping up a tone. That's two frets and then a semitone. Two, three, four, and one, two, and three frets above, five frets above, seventh fret to the open. Now, if you want to try and incorporate the guitar part, I've been, I was working on it, trying to get it part of the arrangement, but I'm finding it a bit difficult. And don't, I just don't have time to practice it right now, but I'm, I'm going to, because I really like it, uh, which is trying to add on this at the same time as playing that bass riff. So if you want to have a try at doing that, second finger, third fret on the second string, just hold it there first of all and see if you can play the bass line. So that's here, the fifth fret, open fifth string, then first finger, first fret, back down again, third fret, fifth fret, open fifth string, open sixth string. So get that down first. But it is definitely a little bit of a finger twister, that one. One, two, three, four. And then if you feel like it, One extra bass note in there. There we go. And then if you want to get really clever, you can move second finger up to the, uh, what was it, sixth fret above the capo, and you can play it then the same as we played it originally, but you've got a nasty stretch with the first finger. And that's about the limit of my spider finger stuff. I'll leave the rest to Mike Dawes and guys like that that can uh, do all of the multiple parts at the same time. But it's a kind of a fun idea. I definitely recommend having a check out of that solo if you want to uh, have a go at it. It's not a particularly difficult one uh, if you're going to get into transcribing, though it's got some stellar bends and some unison bends. Actually, there is a bit going on, but it's the kind of thing that would be uh, more appropriate in a separate lesson to talk about that one. I really hope you enjoy learning this song as much as I did. It's definitely one of those ones where I've heard it a lot and thought, wow, that's a great tune. I should learn it one day. Uh, and I should thank you guys for voting it as the number one song on the Justin Guitar request board. Uh, if you want to request some other songs, remember you go to justinguitar.com forward slash songs. The bottom of that page, you can submit requests. And I'm really trying to uh, make sure I keep on an eye on those top 10 songs and do as many of them as I possibly can. And this one was the number one. So I'm really hoping uh, that you've enjoyed this one. If you'd voted for 
for it. Uh, it is a bit of a tough one, so if you've made it this far, congratulations, uh, you're doing great. I'd love to see some covers of you playing it. Uh, either tag me on social media and upload a video of yourself, or, uh, or maybe uh, leave a comment on the Justin Guitar community, which is a forum over on the website full of like-minded guitar players. There's a special section there uh, called Audio and Video of You Playing, where you can get feedback from the community and from me and the other moderators. A really cool little community of guitar players we've got brewing over there, so maybe you'd like to come and join in the fun. I uh, hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You all take care. Bye-bye.